Does morality depend on God? Well, it's, it's one of the deepest and hardest and longest standing questions in Western philosophy. And, you know, I want to make sort of a quick clarification about it and talk about a little bit about how I try to think through the problem. So the question of whether morality depends on God is not a question about whether or not our beliefs about morality depend on God. Almost everybody involved in the question on every side um, thinks that, you know, people can form, you know, justified, reliable moral judgments without having any sort of religious belief. The main issue is it was a metaphysical question. It's about you know, whether or not these truths about morality ultimately somehow are explained or grounded in or have their source in truths about God. Okay, so that's the, the, the clarification. In terms of um, how to think through the problem, sort of one common way of trying to think through it is by asking, you know, do we really you know, need God to explain moral value? You know, could we possibly live in a world that's not you know, nihilistic in terms of moral value unless we had God behind the whole story? That's not the way I prefer to think through it. Uh, it seems to me that you know, one way that one can sensibly ask the question and try to sort of give a, a meaningful answer to it is by just sort of starting with an assumption, right? If theism is true, right, if it's true, um, that God exists and that God has the character that's usually associated with God. You know, will it be true right, that moral facts ultimately must you know, be grounded in or explained by truths about moral value? It's funny, so, so it seems to me that within theism, right, within folks who, who take this view seriously, there's sort of a couple of, you know, there's a tension there, right? On the one side, right, we want God to be the source of everything. We want God to be absolutely sovereign. We want God to be totally in control, totally in charge. On the other side, you know, we're moral believers, just like moral, you know, the rest of the world being moral believers, who believes that, that moral norms have a kind of stability and permanence and necessity, right? That they couldn't have been different. It couldn't have been right to torture children, or it couldn't have been right to kill people for no good reason. And yet these two things seem to be in a kind of a tension with each other. Those philosophers who want to say that God's ultimately sovereign over everything have often wanted to defend a sort of voluntarism in which all moral norms depend on God's will. God's giving us a certain set of commands, or God's just wanting us or, or, or intending that we act a certain way. Um, whereas those who want to emphasize the stability or necessity right, of the moral norms have wanted to treat moral norms as autonomous. Right? Somehow, you know, even in this world you know, created and sustained by God, they have a kind of independence of anything that God wills or wants. So it seems to me that, that you know, both sides have to be wrong if theism is true, that we can't think of, of morality wholly dependent on God's will. We can't think of it as wholly autonomous. And you know, sort of how to start thinking through this problem, I think, is, is a real difficulty. Um, and one clue that, I've, that I've, you know, I've seized upon in trying to think through this is the fact that the same sorts of questions arise about God's relationship to laws of nature, truths about the natural world. We want God to be creator of the whole natural world. But we also think that science is possible, that you know, truths about nature have a kind of stability and necessity. And one way that folks have tried to reconcile these two is to think of the laws of nature as involving a kind of cooperation between God and creatures, right? That God you know, makes beings that have a certain fixed nature, a stable nature. You know? Salt dissolves water, probably water dissolves salt, because that's the kind of thing that water is, that's the kind of thing that salt is. But somehow it's in virtue of God's you know, creative force that these things can exercise the active causal power in the world. It's a kind of cooperation between God and creatures. So here's the way I've been thinking about things and the suggestion that I've, I've tried to put forward is that we're never gonna be able to give a satisfying theistic account of the relationship between God and morality unless we somehow see God and nature as cooperating uh, in, in establishing the truth of moral norms, right? That, that these things that we think of as goods worth responding to, you know, a small child's well-being, that's why we don't harm the small child, right? Um, this is a necessary truth, we might think, um, that somehow these aren't just facts about creatures. These are facts about God, right? So the small creature, you know, the small human beings goodness, right, that makes, that makes it um, immune to reasonable, you know, causing of harm, right, um, that has that goodness in virtue of being a likeness to God, right, in virtue of being, as the old language puts it, you know, imago Dei, an image of God. And so there are no moral facts that are just between creatures, that every moral truth um, is ultimately connected up to some sort of fact about God. And that's the way I like to think about these things.